Hi, this is Doug from Who's Right. You're listening to Movies, Music, Me. 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 Hey, what's up? It's time for six completed discographies once again. It has been a while. This isn't a very frequent series on my channel at all, but it's how we keep track of what I listen to, and where I talk about artists and bands in a more frequent manner, seeing as I don't review every album that I listen to. I could do that, but I'd be dead. Anyway, we go through six, and then there's some bonus ones at the end. I just throw ones that I don't have a ton to say about in bonus, and the rest I go through with as much as I have to say. It goes in order from worst to best, and then we have the bonuses at the end. And this time around, yeah, the worst one, I actually really don't like. So, let's get started. Up first we have Cindy. I couldn't stand this shit. It was very fucking bad. <laughs> but at the same time, it's probably passable for most people. I get bothered very easily by this sad indie acoustic type shit where it just does nothing new. It's one of my least favorite things in music. That's probably why I'm more bothered. Cindy is offensively bland. <laughs> every song, and I mean every song, sounded the same for three albums. Nothing new there at all. I felt like every song was just, I'm gonna sing like this, and it's gonna keep going like this and do the same for every song and for three whole albums. It's fucking painful, man. It's fucking painful. Nothing against the band, of course. They can do what they want and it's totally inoffensive, really. But by Christ, I just can't take it. If they bring out another album, I'll listen to it and hope to God that they figure out how to do more than play two notes on a guitar and sing slowly. But I will not be pleased, I'm sure. If you're into that stuff, go for it and enjoy the band if you enjoy them. But I could not take it. They seriously need some instrumental creativity and to add some flavor to the vocal work. Not good at all so far. Up next we have Cleo Soul. I mean, she's not awful or anything, and I like her voice a fair bit, but my issue is the lack of direction in her music. While listening to both albums, I was just sort of thinking, dear god, I'm bored. Nothing really grabbed me. It's soul slash R&B music, and much like the last discography that I talked about, it's just devoid of creativity. Nothing stands out at all aside from the odd lyric here and there. The music itself is the problem, really. I truly feel like she would be able to thrive under better production. However, it could just be that this music isn't entirely entirely my thing. One comparison that I would make is Georgia Smith. Not a big fan of her, but she sounds quite similar to Cleo. So if you like her, you would probably like Cleo. I just think better things could have been done with her music, and that's all I've got to say really. Up next we have Naya. It's spelled as N-G-A-I-I-R-E, but it's pronounced Naya, I believe. I really, really like her. This is a great example of good R&B slash soul music with some electro pop thrown in. She feels a lot like these other artists like Beyonce, Georgia Smith, Alicia Keys, but with a more experimental approach, I would say. I don't know how much agreement I'd get there, but I think she's certainly a lot more out there with her creative approach. She's a Papua New Guinea-born Australian-raised singer, and man, I wish she had grown more popular by now. The first place I heard her was from a Ministry of Sound Chill Out Sessions mix, where her song Around was featured. Also, that mix is what I have to thank for a lot of my discoveries of my favourite music, such as Metronomy, Little Dragon, Frank Ocean, The Drums, Beach House, and now Naya, and many more. It was a really good fucking mix, man. Like, goddamn. Introduced me to some great shit. I think in terms of her albums, I would put her second album at the top. Some of those songs just grab me so well with how enjoyable the hooks could be or how appealing the vocals could be. Superb album. The other two are very good as well. Yeah, I just think she's pretty great, and I hope that she does even better in the future, and hopefully can gain some popularity, because I really do think she's doing some great shit. Up next we have Japanese Breakfast. Quite good. Good band. I feel quite strong emotions that I can't quite pin down when I hear some of their music. I heard about them mostly because their latest album, Psychopomp, seems to be quite loved, but I can't lie, I really do think that's the weakest one. I'm not saying that to go against the grain or anything, I'm not like Omega fucking hipster right here. There's plenty of really popular stuff out there that I acknowledge earns its popularity, but I don't feel strongly towards that album. I like the song's tactics and posing in bondage though, and we'll see how I feel on re-listen. However, the other two albums I really loved. The first was just wonderful and felt very breezy and heartfelt, don't know how else to describe it. The second though is my favourite, easily. It's where I feel Michelle's vocal 
vocals are at their best, and their guitar work especially is to die for. Some moments just fill me with butterflies, especially on the song Machinist, which still amazes me. It is a beautiful album. But yeah, all in all, I really like the band. I hope they make even better stuff in the future. Super talented and unique. Feels like sort of a mix of Beach House and Sasami's first album. I haven't heard Sasami's second album yet, but yeah, her first album feels a bit similar to some of Japanese Breakfast's stuff. But yeah, that's how I feel about that. Up next, we have Boney M. They're definitely a mixed bag in some ways, but for the most part, I thoroughly enjoyed their music. They didn't ever really change up their style or anything, but hey, if it works, it works. There was a noticeable decline in their last few albums, but I never felt like any of them were bad. I found at least one song that I liked on every album, which I think is great. There's so much more outside of things like Rasputin and Daddy Cool, where I just think, why the hell didn't this song blow up? I feel that way strongly about the songs Young, Free and Single and I Feel Good. Those songs are fucking fantastic and I played the shit out of them. They were just a very great band that earned their reputation I think, even though some things went on causing a decline and many shifts between the members, they still gave it a good shot each time and created some damn fine disco music. I gotta say that I actually considered doing a full video review of one of their albums at one point, one that I still genuinely consider to be a masterpiece. That album being Night Flight to Venus, I really never can get over how perfect that album is. From the opening mood setting intro of the title track into Rasputin, to the incredible closer covering Neil Young's Heart of Gold beautifully. I've cried so many times when I hear that closer. That album is just an absolute masterpiece in every way. Anyway, yeah, they were a great band. I always look forward to re-listening to their stuff, and I would recommend checking them out and giving them a proper go. And lastly, so my favourite one of the six, La Femme. These guys came out of nowhere and blew my mind. I don't exactly remember how I found out about them, but I'm glad that I did. They have three albums, and it felt like it just got better as it went along. Their first I felt was really good, but some songs didn't really pack the punch of the others. Their second I truly loved, and found some amazing songs like Les Chemin, Exorcisia, and La Vie de Est Ton Nové Prénom. Probably not pronouncing that right at all. I'm just gonna put those names here because I just, I can't. I don't even know if I want to keep that in the video, <laughs> holy fuck. It flowed so well, and it felt like it flew by even at an hour and 14 minutes long, which is not an easy thing to do, believe me. And then they came back with their third album, and god fucking damn, I've listened to it twice and fuck me, it's just superb. I can't stop loving it. The title track, Le Sang de Mon Prashon, Disconnection, Divine Creature, and Va are all such incredible songs. The whole vibe of it is just so lovely. My second listen was recently when I was on the bus at night to the airport when I was leaving Ireland, and it was just such a beautiful mood, super cold, various lights going by, closing my eyes, leaning on the window. It all just felt so lovely. I can't recommend La Femme enough. If you're wondering, they're a sort of new wave, psychedelic electro pop type band from France. Really do give them a go. They've also said that they take some of their inspiration from Sparks and Craftwork. I was in Ireland to see Sparks with my best friend, so that's a good sign to me. Give them a shot, please. They deserve all the appreciation they can get. I really hope they keep making more amazing music, because they're just doing so fucking well. And now it's time for bonus discographies. We just have two this time, and they're basically just ones that I have barely anything to say about. Out, but we got to keep track of every discography that I finish, so they're there, alright? Firstly, we have Terza. She's nice. I like her music quite a bit. It's really strange experimental music that has its own unique flavour, I would say. Only two albums so far, but they show a lot of promise. I think her second album was better too, so I hope she only goes up in the future. She's got some really cool songs that grab me very well, and a lot of personality to her music. And that's all i got to say, really. <laughs> and last, but certainly, certainly not least, Doja Cat. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't know why I did it, but there you go. She's probably not my kind of thing, but uh, I think she has two great songs and they're pretty basic picks. Those being Say So and Kiss Me More, they are both very good. I enjoy them a lot. The others just feel like trash music. <laughs> nothing special there and nothing to say about it. She's not god-awful or anything, but she's certainly not good either. So yeah, those were six completed discographies and bonus discographies. What did you think of these artists? Have you heard them? Did you like them? Let me know down below, and please check out my links down in the description. And just a heads up, if you would like, I have a music board, which is a app where you can like log every album that you listen to, and I don't really ever do proper reviews on there or anything, but I do first reaction reviews, so if you want to know what my initial thoughts are of an album, right after I listen to it, then go check that out. Also, 
if you didn't know, I do have a podcast with a guy called Quinn from America. It's called Yeah No No Yeah. We go on there and we talk about movies, music, live stuff, whatever the fuck comes up. We have a good time doing it. And I would greatly appreciate if you checked it out. There are links to the Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube all in the description. So please check it out. And I would greatly appreciate it. And if you did enjoy this video, then please subscribe. It really, really helps me. And thank you as always for watching. I respect your opinion and I hope you have a great day. And bye. Thank you.